It's a beautiful day for a race. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Homestead Miami Speedway. Once known as NASCAR's championship track. Now I guess it's called the middle of the round of eight track, which just doesn't quite roll off the tongue the same way. But still a very important date on the NASCAR schedule, a fan favorite, a driver favorite track. We are just outside the main gates. NASCAR 75th season beginning to draw to a close. Last time I was here was 2019, the final year Homestead Miami hosted the championship race. I did a race day vlog then, but I figured it was due for an upgrade. Today I'm gonna show you as much of the fan experience I possibly can. Outside the track, inside the gates, we'll go onto the infield. I believe Homestead Miami sells like an infield pass. Like for Sunday only, it's 50 bucks a ticket. We'll get some up close views of the drivers, the cars. Right now though, we're out here looking at some merchandise and that neon yellow Kyle Larson t-shirt has my attention. Fans are lined up just around the corner here to meet. I think Austin Dillon is coming out soon. I see an ad here, RCR has fan day coming up this week. Oof, a little awkward since it sounds like he's going to Gibbs. <laughs> They've got some Junior Motorsports stuff, including Dale Jr.'s die cast, the paint scheme he ran here yesterday, finished top five in his second Xfinity start of the season. Kind of awkward, they still have Noah Gregson merch for sale here. Although also, I didn't know substitute driver Carson Osivar got merch. I mean, it looks pretty cool, but <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, I see most of it is here on the clearance rack. Oh no. <laughs> oh, I see the price though is heavily marked down. They're like 50% off. I sometimes feel a little funny buying merch for you know the teams and drivers I'm supposed to be you know covering, but I am still a fan first and you know Matt Kenseth is joining the team as <laughs> just you know just as like a driver mentor coach you know still I, I figured I'd pick up a hat at least I've walked all the way down to the turn one end here and boy it's a Chevy Corvette convention oh my bad it's a Chevy Corvette car corral oh yeah I forgot about this just across the street they've got a go-kart track you may have heard of parking lot roller coasters. This is a parking lot go-kart track, but it is a cool one. Uh, I remember driving here a few years ago and like far in there, way out in the distance, there's a hairpin I just about wiped out on every single lap. I was hoping we'd see some action, but I guess they're in between sessions. Uh, either way, this is pretty cool. You can race go-karts, I don't know, literally 100 yards from the turn one catch fence. Walking back towards the turn four side of this merch hauler stretch, and here you got the official Homestead Miami Speedway trailer. Big fan of their new logo, their new color scheme. Not sure about this. They had something like that at Chicago as well. The basketball jersey printed onto like a dry fit hoodie. I mean, I don't know, I guess it's cool if you're into that. Today's race is called the Forever 400 in honor of Kevin Harvick's final season, his final homestead start. We'll take a good look at that uh, throwback paint scheme a little later on in the video. Okay, I think we've made it to the end. Racing Electronics has their scanner rental trailer. You can always rent a scanner on a week by week basis. Nowadays I travel with a, a very small simplistic scanner that I use just to listen to the radio broadcast so I know what's going on when I'm walking around the track. You know, it's kind of like the iPod shuffle I'd say of uh, scanners. Growing up going to races with my dad at Texas Motor Speedway we would almost always rent a scanner. We probably should have invested and purchased one or two at a certain point. Do you remember those uh, the fan visions? Maybe that was a sprint or Nextel thing but you know, I, I kind of miss those. I miss those. We are still hours away from from the green flag. Green flag is scheduled for just after 2.30 p.m. The time now is, if my watch will turn on, 10.34. If you can see that, gates opened about half an hour ago. Let's head on inside. Check this out, walking in, Verizon, giving us little checkered flags. I mean, they're more like white flags, honestly. Like, you know, I surrender. You can really only wave them on the last lap. Although I guess you can really only wave a checkered flag on the last lap as well. Uh, but yeah, okay, pretty cool. NASCAR races are an all day experience. Fans, bright and early this morning pouring in. A good look at a map of the facility. These are all available at homesteadmiamispeedway.com. But you can see we are, I think, close to gate three right now. So we're out in the, the midway, as they call it, behind the front straightaway. So first thing I decided to do was walk all the way here towards uh, what used to be the turn one grandstands. Last time I was here, I think they were beginning maybe to tear these down. Some boxes and bathrooms still remain, but by and large, look at all the open space. 
hopefully eventually they're able to maybe better utilize all that space right now next door is the nascar kid zone and i just noticed on this sign right here in about half an hour brexton bush will be here the kid is like eight nine years old and he's already making appearances on nascar sundays eric jones is on stage here at the chevrolet display he's kind of in the shadows right there kind of mysterious this is why you should always try to get to the track early drivers are often doing q and a's autograph sessions hours before the green flag you never know who you're gonna see out here it's smokey the bear oh my gosh he's like the only person out here taller than me well he's he's not a person he's a bear you gotta do like the point doesn't he doesn't he like point at you typically like guilting you into not starting any uh, forest fires. Hey, the Miami Marlins are here. Shoot, I still call them the Florida Marlins, but they've got a crowd. Oh my gosh, check this out. This dude's actually wearing the basketball hoodie print thing. Honestly, it looks better on a human being than I thought it would, so I, I take back what I said earlier. I'm not even joking. Like, it may not be your thing, but it actually looks okay. It looks pretty cool. I'm glad we got here early, because a lot of these photo ops usually are slammed with people Check out this Ross Chastain car. That looks nice. I've noticed a lot of tracks these days do have free Wi-Fi for fans. The results are often mixed. I had good luck with this one yesterday. We'll see with the bigger crowd today. We might have some issues. If you ever see me at the racetrack standing in one place looking at my phone for a long time, it's probably because I found a good Wi-Fi spot and I'm just checking Twitter. Also, take a look at this Phoenix Championship wrapped next gen car. Is this one of the like neutral test cars? Look at the front end. This doesn't have Chevy, Ford, or Toyota. Toyota branding it looks like it looks like one of the prototypes am I crazy did they convert a next-gen prototype into a show car oh gosh never mind there's already a crowd here in the NASCAR experience fans are swarming this white hot Kevin Harvick show car one thing that is very unique about Homestead Miami Speedway is it doesn't matter how cold it is out here it can be like 60 degrees in the morning or 95 in the afternoon you're gonna be sliding around all the time here here in the NASCAR experience you can make some laps on iRacing rigs two hands on the wheel buddy two hands yeah that's that's how you make lap time he's he's bold just wandering around out here behind the main grandstands they got this cool like central pavilion some nice shade looks like they have like a bar in there we're getting close to lunchtime so I figured I'd scout out some of the food options look at this tent feels like someone's getting married out here and this is the reception lots and lots of food trucks out here be your own sugar daddy <laughs> I'm not sure about that one but hey you, you succeeded in capturing my attention Lots of Cuban culture, of course, when you're in the Miami area. But you know, they've got the classics out here as well. Ooh, churros and ice cream. Okay, this line has to be longer than this. Come on, y'all, it's churros and ice cream. Hey, I guess your loss is my win. My senses kicked in. We just went with the churro. I went ahead and passed on the ice cream, but look at this thing. Why is it shaped like this? I appreciate the presentation. Okay. Mm. It kind of melts in your mouth. It's not like tough or chewy. I don't know. I've had some bad churros. As if that's even possible. But hey, this is actually, you know, as churros go, this is high quality. I like it. I look like such a tourist right now. <laughs> Austin Dillon, they're riding shotgun, heading back into the tunnel. My mouth is stuffed with churro. <laughs> Ooh, now that my dessert is over, I'm starting to get hungry for lunch. Oh. Crowd is definitely starting to fill in a bit more. I think it's about time we head into the racetrack. Again, everything we've seen up to this point, you can see with just a basic grandstand ticket. But now we will head through the pedestrian tunnel here on the turn one side of the front straightaway. We are a pedestrian. We are walking. I looked on the Homestead Miami Speedway uh, website this morning, and I believe an infield grounds ticket for just Sunday cost about $50 per person. That'll get you in onto the racetrack during pre-race. Should get you up close with the cars, maybe some of the drivers during driver intros. Now a big thank you to Homestead Miami Speedway for allowing me to be officially credentialed this weekend. So uh, we will be able to go some places perhaps that the average fan isn't, but I will do my best to highlight the difference as we go. So we're now inside the track as you can see there's the grandstands on the front stretch behind me and here is the line of fans coming out of the infield tunnel and being redirected this way towards the front straightaway we will be joining them shortly for now though i'm actually walking through the xfinity series garage this is where all the xfinity haulers were yesterday look at all these look at all these trucks lined up hey what the that one's got a sleeping mask on that one oh he's awake 
Ugh. Kind of creepy, honestly. Uh, I've got some work to go take care of, so I will meet back up with y'all uh, a little closer to the green flag. All right, about two hours away from green flag, I'm gonna head into the Cup Series garage. So this you do need an official credential to get into. The average fan is not typically allowed back here, but I just wanted to take a quick look because I hear some of the cars warming up. It looks like most cars have been pushed to the grid already. There are a few stragglers. Getting ready to steal the show. Oh, oh my gosh. Almost bumped shoulders with the one and only Grimace. We're gonna follow these guys out. Oh my, oh never mind. We're gonna, we're gonna dance with these guys out onto the grid. I lost track of uh, the, the Hamburglar and, and company uh, somewhere in the crowd. So they could be anywhere. They could sneak up on me at any moment. <laughs> It is loud over there. I had to walk all the way over here to the Geico restart zone to hear myself think. It looks like fans do get a pretty good view of the cars while they're parked here on the grid. But you have to walk over to the inside safer barrier wall and you have to kind of look over this way. There you go. Check this out. I can get the Hooters car and the pit box. And, and I don't know, is that the pit crew back there? <laughs> In the same shot. Pretty decent view of the cars. We'll see if a little later on I can jump over that wall and get you guys maybe a little more up close with some of the favorites. Pretty cool view though. They let you walk pretty far down into turn four here, almost up into the banking. Up close with the uh, safer barrier. How close will these drivers be? About, uh, oh, I don't know, an inch off this wall. I mean, they're gonna be in the wall. Man, I just noticed they've repainted since yesterday. They repainted a lot. This whole uh, uh, wall, especially out further into the corner, was basically black by the end of yesterday's doubleheader. Damn, overnight, they must come out here and, and repaint it. Man, that's a tough job. I remember thinking while watching the race yesterday, I was standing over here by a pit entry and I looked at the wall and I'm like, dang, that thing is black. Like all the banners, all the sponsor logos have been brushed over. I wasn't sure if they were gonna repaint, but they did. Lo and behold, they repainted the vast majority of this wall overnight. That is an impressive attention to detail, I suppose. There's an airplane flying overhead uh, advertising the uh, Enrique Iglesias Pitbull Ricky tour that's coming to Miami. What are they calling that tour? Like the, the triple threat or the trifecta or something? It's got some catchy name to it. Well, we've made it to the end of Pit Road. I might try to head back into the infield garage area a little bit. Uh, you can see here, the right side of these cars, perfectly clean. It won't be at the end of uh, 267 laps today. I don't know the exact schedule of events, but I'm pretty sure the drivers meeting or the, you know, the club 1948 thing will be wrapping up soon. And typically from there, the drivers go straight to driver intros and usually fans get a good view of their favorite driver. So I'm gonna go back into the uh, little infield garage area to see if I can catch a glimpse of that. Oh boy, welcome to the center. I don't actually know what this is called, but this is like in the infield, like directly behind me is the start finish line. So this is kind of the central spot behind Pit Road. This is where the media center is. They have some merch, some bathrooms. Victory Lane is behind this like suite. There's a tram that drops you off right outside of this main area here. It's kind of small, it's kind of tight, but it's meant to funnel you out onto the grid, onto the racetrack where the DJ was, where we just were. I should have probably started with this view, but there's a tram letting people off, come through bag check, security, and then uh, and then you're in. Ooh, what's this? The Paddock Cafe? Man, I thought the F1 track was on the other side of town. Ah, well, to each their own. I'm gonna go join that big crowd we just walked past so I can try to sneak a peek at some of the drivers as they're heading towards driver intros. The time is 1.13. Green flag, I believe, is set for 2.36. They usually start driver intros in about an hour before green flag. It sometimes varies from track to track, but that should mean uh, drivers will be heading there soon. Ooh, 
They used to sort of just trickle out of the driver's meeting. Now it's just a full flood. They open those doors and it's like the running of the bulls in Spain. I still hear that DJ going, but we're gonna try and make our way back out towards the grid. Maybe we'll catch a glimpse of driver intros. Maybe we'll see, I'll see if we can go check out the cars a little bit. Okay, we've made it to the grid. Now this section of pit road, you cannot access with the infield ticket. This is closed off to traditional fans. Look at Dale and Jeff posing with that championship trophy. The grid is already packed with people and even not people. He's just grimace. Now this is the trifecta right here. This is the trio. Also, I don't know how this car passed inspection. Look at that thing. It's not quite as chaotic down here by Kyle Larson's car who dominated this race a year ago. I love when Ally uh, does sort of custom paint schemes. They did that Nashville one last year. Here's a Miami one with flamingos on it. And with Ally, of course, Bernard Pollard, former NFL player, is here. There goes Rick Hendrick. Whoops, there he goes. He just left Chase Elliott's car. Hendrick has two drivers in the playoffs, but he still has three cars, technically championship eligible. Talked to Eric Jones earlier this weekend. Got to sit down to a one-on-one -on -one interview. If you missed that, uh, go check it out. Got to talk to him a lot about next year with Legacy Motor Club. Okay, where is it, where is it? There's really only one car out here that I really have to see. Uh, it's cool to see those fire suits back in action. Gosh dang, where the heck did he qualify? Oh shoot, you know what, I just remembered I walked right past it. I'll just follow this guy, he'll know where it is. Uh, that hood brings back memories, although it's a little weird seeing Ford. He won that championship in a Chevy. Kevin's got one of his kids, I think it's his daughter, in the front seat. Really cool, I'm sure, for Harvick, the entire team. Even NASCAR fans, to see Budweiser back, that branding, it's pretty awesome. Always cool to walk along the grid a bit before the race. I'm, I swear, this never gets old. I'm very fortunate, very blessed to get to do what I do as often as I get to do it. Race is about to start. Another driver, potentially, will lock himself into the championship four. Let's go check it out. What a race. Uh, it's almost nine o'clock, so the race has been over for like, I don't know, three hours now, almost. Um, track is all but empty. Thank you all so much for uh, following along today, checking out this video. It is a dream come true to get to go to these races, cover them like I do, bring y'all along for the journey the best I can. It's cliche, but I mean it. It would not be possible without your support. So thanks for tuning in. See y'all next time.